This video will describe RICO, short for Retrieve and Co-Segment, focusing on why RICO is useful and how it works. In particular, we'll discuss the paper RICO, Retrieve and Co-Segment for Zero-Shot Transfer by Gyungen Shin et al, which appears at NeurIPS 2022. The task considered in this work is semantic segmentation, in which our goal is to assign a class label to individual pixels in images. This task has many applications spanning areas such as autonomous driving, medical image analysis, and land cover estimation for logistical operations. There's been considerable progress on semantic segmentation in recent years, but four key challenges still limit the potential of existing approaches. First, cost. Collecting manually annotated pixel level labels is excruciatingly expensive. The creators of Cityscape's dataset, for example, Note a time of 90 minutes per image when accounting for quality control. Consequently, fully supervised approaches for semantic segmentation become prohibitively expensive to scale. Second, flexibility. Many existing supervised approaches are restricted to limited lists of categories and are challenging to adapt to rare categories that may lack segmentation labels. Third, deployment complexity. This applies to unsupervised methods that have recently made promising progress, but still require labelled examples to assign names to predictions prior to deployment. Fourth, data access. The majority of existing work, whether supervised or unsupervised, is trained on the target distribution of images. This is an approach which may not be feasible for real-world applications for practical or regulatory reasons, such as in medical image analysis, for example. The RICO framework targets these four challenges by drawing inspiration from two key findings from prior work. The first is that modern deep neural networks for computer vision, particularly vision transformers, are able to discover the spatial extent of objects and to establish semantic correspondences between pixels even when they have been trained without pixel level supervision, as illustrated by works such as Dino, Diet S. Sin, and Stego. The second is that internet-scale language and vision pre-training on images paired with alt text produces models that exhibit both a large vocabulary in terms of the concepts that they can recognize, and also remarkable zero-shot transfer abilities in the sense that they can be applied to new domains without fine-tuning. This line of work is perhaps best exemplified by CLIP. Rico built on these findings with a three-stage pipeline. It first applies CLIP to a collection of unlabeled images to create archives that contain particular concepts. Since CLIP has a large vocabulary, these concepts can be very diverse. Then, it uses the knowledge of object extent and the ability of modern vision networks to find correspondences in order to co-segment the concepts that appear in each archive. It then uses these co-segmentations, together with CLIP, to construct a segmenter that can be applied in a zero-shot transfer manner. As an optional extra, for cases when access to unlabeled images is available, RICO can be extended to RICO Plus by simply incorporating traditional target domain adaptation via pseudo-labeling. To give some example predictions, in this case on Coco Stuff, for this input image, which has this ground truth highlighting the vehicle ground and plants, we can apply RICO in a zero-shot transfer setting to coarsely identify each of these regions. As one might expect, if access to unlabeled training images from the target domain is available, then Rico Plus is able to clean up this segmentation for a more polished result. We'll now turn to how Rico works. Let's suppose we want to build a segmenter for a lionfish. The starting point is an unlabeled image collection. The first hypothesis that underpins Rico is that since modern image datasets are so vast and diverse, numbering the billions of images, they are likely to contain whichever concept is of interest which in our example is a lionfish. The first phase of the framework focuses on retrieval, which aims to identify relevant images in the collection. This is done by creating a text prompt, such as a photo of a lionfish, and passing it to CLIP, a vision and language model, together with the image collection. CLIP uses the prompt as a query to curate an archive of images of lionfish from within the image collection. The second phase of RICO focuses on co-segmentation, which refers to the process of jointly segmenting similar objects within a collection of images. In this case, we're going to co-segment the lionfish from the archive. To do this, each of the K images in the archive is passed to an image encoder, which is used to extract dense feature maps. Then, affinity matrices are computed with pairwise dot products between these feature maps, 
and are stacked into a k-by-k -K block matrix. Intuitively, each submatrix describes how similar a pixel is in one image to another pixel at another location in another image. The quality of these affinities is improved with a couple of techniques. The first is called language-guided co-segmentation, which aims to enhance the foreground estimates of the lionfish. This works by using a method called dense clip, which takes in the prompt and each image and estimates coarse probability maps for the lionfish. The same idea is then also repeated to eliminate irrelevant context by suppressing the saliency of background and distractor objects. In particular, dense clip is used to estimate the presence of common distractor classes which are subtracted from the existing probability maps. These maps are then combined with the affinities through matrix multiplication. Finally, the affinities are used to select a seed pixel from each image, which corresponds to the location that has the greatest similarity to pixels in other images, and the features from each seed pixel are averaged to produce a reference embedding vector to represent the concept, in this case, a lionfish. The success of this approach relies on a second key hypothesis, which is that CLIP is capable of curating archives of high purity. Otherwise, the co-segmentation will perform poorly and the reference embedding will be noisy. When it comes to inference on an unseen image that we'd like to segment, we pass the image into the image encoder to obtain a dense collection of embeddings. By taking the dot product of these features with our reference embedding and passing the result through a sigmoid, we obtain a probability map for the lionfish. This is further refined by using a prompt which is combined with the image via a dense clip to produce an additional coarse estimate of the spatial extent of the lionfish. The two are then combined via a Hadamard product to produce the final probability estimate, which can be discretized to produce a segmentation. Similarly to other segmentation methods, it is found that using a CRF as a simple post-processing step produces a small further improvement. In this overview, for the sake of simplicity, We've described segmentation of a single class, i.e. lionfish, but it is trivial to apply RICO for multi-class segmentation by processing multiple concepts independently. Finally, the RICO plus variant of the framework is obtained by simply using RICO to predict masks as pseudo-labels on a given target distribution, then training a deep lab V3 plus segmentation model on those pseudo-labels. Since this work involves a number of different data sources and label regimes, we'll next give an overview of how data is employed at different stages of RICO. First, there is pre-training data. RICO depends on CLIP, which was trained on web image text, a collection of 400 million image alt text pairs, which is not publicly available, but that we know has been curated to reflect common terms obtained from sources such as English Wikipedia and Synsets in WordNet. RICO also requires a co-segmentation backbone. A number of options work well here, of which it was found that DIT S SYN works best. This model was pre-trained on stylized ImageNet, a collection of 1.2 million stylized images annotated with image level labels. The DeepLab V3 Plus model used in RICO Plus employs a ResNet 101 backbone that is trained on ImageNet 1K, 1.2 million images with image level labels, this time without stylization. For the archiving and co-segmentation process used by RICO itself, the core experiments also employ ImageNet 1K, this time without using class labels. Additional experiments are also conducted on a subset of the Lion 5B dataset, which comprises 5 billion images spanning many categories. Since this data has undergone a relatively lightweight curation process, the subset used by RICO is manually filtered to remove images containing humans. The ablation studies for the method are conducted in a zero-shot transfer setting on Pascal Context Validation Set, a collection of 5,000 segmented images with 59 categories. The test data used to evaluate the final models includes several datasets. The first is Cityscapes Validation Set, which has 500 segmented images of urban scenes spanning 27 categories. The next is Kitty Step Validation Set which includes 3,000 images of urban scenes across 19 categories. The third is Coco Stuff Validation Set, which includes 4,000 images. Following previous works, 27 mid-level categories are used for evaluation. Finally, to demonstrate the ability to segment rare classes, experiments are conducted on the FireNet dataset, which includes 1,500 images spanning fire safety classes. RICO is evaluated on fire extinguishers 
as an example of a class that does not occur in ImageNet. Rico Plus Unsupervised Adaptation is performed by training on Rico pseudo labels on the Cityscapes training split, the Kitty Step training split, and the Coco Stuff 10K training split. In each case, no labels are used. We now turn to ablation studies. The first aims to assess the validity of the second hypothesis, which was that CLIP is capable of curating high purity archives from unlabeled images. For this, a retrieval experiment was conducted on ImageNet 1K validation set of 50,000 images spanning 1K classes. Here, we are showing the size of archive retrieved by CLIP on the x-axis and precision on the y-axis for a range of different CLIP variants. We observe that all models achieve solid retrieval performance, with the highest capacity VITL14 model performing best, obtaining a precision of over 0.6, even for archives of size 50, suggesting that CLIP can indeed curate archives of relatively high purity. The second ablation explores the influence of archive size and the choice of visual encoder on the co-segmentation phase of RICO. Here, we plot segmentation performance on Pascal context validation set, with archive size on the x-axis and mean IOU on the y-axis for a range of different visual encoders, including CLIP, MOCO v2, DIT S16 SYN, and DINO. We observe that DIT S16 SYN, shown in green, produces the best results, and that broadly speaking, larger archives work better than smaller ones. The third ablation evaluates the contributions of different framework components, again, on the Pascal context segmentation validation set. The starting point is the baseline variant of the framework with the components switched off. Including dense clip substantially boosts performance to 21.8 mean IOU. Extending this with language-guided co-segmentation, but not context elimination, brings performance to 23.1. Including context elimination, but not language-guided co-segmentation, reaches 26.0, while including them both brings performance to 26.6. Finally, use of a CRF further boosts performance to 27.2. The takeaways are that dense clip brings a major gain, use of a CRF brings a minor gain, and all components help. We now turn to comparisons with existing approaches. The first evaluation is conducted on Coco Stuff under the setting of zero-shot transfer, in which no images from the target distribution are seen during training. In comparison to dense clip, which obtains a mean IOU of 19.6, Rico shows gains, achieving 26.3 MIOU. Note that both dense clip and Rico make use of vision language pre-training. Under the more relaxed, unsupervised adaptation setting, in which each method has access to unlabeled images from the target distribution, comparisons are made with several prior works, and it is found that Rico Plus performs comparably to Stego, the existing state of the art, with better mean IOU but worse pixel accuracy. Note that unlike Rico Plus, Stego does not require vision language pre-training, but does require Hungarian matching to assign classes to its predicted labels. On Cityscapes, under a zero-shot transfer setting, when comparing to prior works, Rico obtains a sizable boost. Note that these comparisons are evaluated at the original image resolution to enable direct comparison, and that the MDC, PiC, and DNS baselines use Waymo open training. Under the unsupervised adaptation comparison to prior work, Rico Plus performs strongly. Finally, on Kitty Step, under a zero shot transfer setting, we find that Rico outperforms Dense Clip, and similarly, on unsupervised adaptation, Rico Plus achieves a substantial gain over existing approaches. Let's now look at some qualitative results. Given input images of an elephant, a street scene, and an artistically framed orange in a car park whose ground truth segmentations are as follows, with colours corresponding to particular categories, Rico is able to coarsely segment the images in a zero-shot transfer setting. When access to images from the target distribution is available, Rico Plus is able to achieve quite clean segmentations. We can also look specifically at the co-segmentations produced by Rico. Here are the top five ranked images appearing in the archive curated by Rico for the concept of teddy bear. The co-segmentation produced by Rico does a reasonable job of picking out the concept that is common to each archive image. To illustrate the potential to go beyond common categories, we can observe that Rico can also co-segment categories such as fire extinguisher and rare concepts such as the Antikythera mechanism.
will now comment on a few limitations of the RICO framework and research methodology. First, some visual concepts are so rare that they do not appear even in modern datasets of billions of images. RICO simply cannot segment these because it cannot construct corresponding archives. Second, RICO inference uses both clip encoders and a visual encoder, which is computationally expensive, though future work could explore more efficient ways to perform inference. Third, the majority of experiments use ImageNet for archive construction, which is known to exhibit a strong object-centric bias. As a consequence, the results may present an optimistic assessment of the generality of RICO, which may perform less well when the unlabeled images do not have this bias. Fourth, RICO relies on CLIP, which is expensive to retrain if a new concept emerges after the model was trained. This means that it is hard to update RICO archives to handle cases such as when a new product appears after CLIP was trained. Finally, while RICO does not make use of pixel-level labels in its pipeline, its design is guided by ablations on the Pascal context validation set labeled data, so there is some form of indirect pixel-level supervision that the model benefits from. RICO draws inspiration from a number of prior works in semantic segmentation. Here, we'll highlight a few themes. There have been many promising proposals for unsupervised semantic segmentation, using objectives based on maximizing mutual information, such as IIC and autoregressive clustering, using metric learning across proposals, such as hierarchical grouping and mass contrast, and using equivariance constraints, such as PIC. There have also been methods that perform distillation of feature correspondences, like Stego, and learn from cross-modal cues, like Drive and Segment. Rico differs from these approaches in that, because it uses vision language pre-training, it does not require a Hungarian matching stage to link its predictions to semantic labels, and is therefore fully independent of pixel-level labelled examples during training and inference. A second theme of prior work has considered weakly supervised semantic segmentation. These works have explored the use of cues such as pointing with point-level supervision, sparse pixel labels with pixel pick, scribble annotations with scribble sup, clicks at the edges of an object with extreme clicking, and image-level labels using methods such as multiple instance learning. One difference between Rico and these works is that, by leveraging its vision and language pre-training, Rico can learn a segmenter by constructing archives from any unlabeled collection of images. It is not necessary for the weak annotation to be attached to the images that will be used as training data. A third theme relates to zero-shot segmentation, which broadly refers to the task of segmenting categories for which no labels were available during training. Various methods have been proposed to tackle this by leveraging word-to-vec style word embeddings, such as open vocabulary scene parsing and ZS3Net. More recent works have built on top of clip embeddings. Examples include DenseClip and LSEC. A core focus of the RICO framework is on zero-shot transfer settings, in which no access is assumed to the target distribution. In this respect, it is directly comparable to the annotation-free setting considered by DenseClip. A fourth and final theme relates to methods for co-segmentation. Here, there are classical approaches such as trust region graph cuts, shared encoder networks such as those used by attention-based object co-segmentation, iterative refinement methods like cycle segnet, and co-segmentation with weak supervision like co-attention CNNs. RICO uses a simple co-segmentation scheme, but in principle can adopt any such co-segmentation approach. In the video description, you can find links to further resources, slides, and references. Thank you for your attention.